All right. Well, welcome, everybody. This is our stand-up meeting. This is the uh, 18th of June, and we talk about what we have done and what we plan to do, uh, if we have any roadblocks or if we need any resources. Um, and uh, let's we'll go ahead and, and start off with, uh, with Paul um, and just tell us about the status in the labs and how you think things are going. Okay, well, the labs are, the lab is working uh, as per usual, which means it's slow to process some things. You don't really know why. I don't know how to find out why. Um, that's not news. That's been going on since the beginning, practically. Uh, I have no other news to report. Yeah, it was fast in the very beginning. I remember that. And since it's come up again, um, is there any experiment or anything that we can try to do to see what's going on? Well, I suppose we could dredge up some benchmark programs and see uh, which things are slow. I have not really tried to investigate along those lines. Is there anything that we can do with Chubb? Uh, not until it gets turned back on. Um, I don't know. It wouldn't really be any different as far as I know, but except for being on whatever different internet service. Yeah, I don't think this is an internet service problem, but the I remember Vivado and and being a whole lot faster when I was working with um with Anshul on the 9371 stuff and it was just really really fast and since then something happened and everything became very slow. I don't mind that much, but like ha seven minutes in order to test something when I don't know what I'm doing or when I'm trying to f figure things out adds up to a whole entire evening. So if we could possibly figure this out, it would be really, really nice. I was hoping that maybe Chubb could be used as an experiment. If it's not on though, I guess that can't be, uh, can't be an, ex you know, something that wouldn't require tearing down chunk. Um, I did, send out another email to the Matt Francis group to see if they would be interested in meeting to talking about remote labs because it sounded like they really, really wanted to set up one uh, to take that equipment from from Arkansas and set it up in Arkansas, but to, to kind of take it over. Uh, and then they got put out to a larger group and there was no no response. If they've had meetings that involve involve it, I haven't seen an invite yet, so I asked and said, you know, I was available this week and and happy to answer questions to try to get them off the dime on that. So that's all I know. I do know that, like, it, it's really slow. <laughs> and it shouldn't be. This is a very powerful computer. So I, I'm not I'm not seeing why um, it's so, so slow. Um, so if we can benchmark it and see, uh, you know, use some standard benchmarks and put it into Remote Labs uh, Slack channel as a start. That would be really great because anecdotes aren't proof, but it does seem to be super slow to me, and I'd like for it to be as fast as it used to be. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Okay, and then I I'd like to go ahead and give the floor to Ever East uh, so he can talk about all of the recent things with the with the Opula voice, it's uh, and the MSK modulator and demodulator, and uh, if there's anything that's uh, stopping him from from making further progress. Yeah, <clears throat> hello everyone. Um, I was stopped uh, by well, I, I uh, so succeeded in uh, uh, building the uh, the binary, the FPGR bin. And I flash the firmware with this uh, uh, system design. Uh, why right now I, I don't have any incoming packets, and um, well, I, I first tried to uh, test the receiver, but um, I guess that as soon as there is no symbol, uh, well, MSK symbol then it's normal that uh, nothing is uh, uh, coming from uh, the MSK uh, component. Um, I asked uh, Matthew about uh, how to uh, 
read and write some uh, register and uh, try to have the status on the control of the uh, of the MS key. Um, well, the he, he point me to a link with the Python, which is a test Python. I guess that it is using the GTAG um, um, programmer or something like that. Because, uh, um, well, my focus is trying to uh, read and write register from the Linux user, uh, the, the, the user space inside the, the, the Pluto. Uh, but as, as I see, he used some uh, Axi read and write. And right now, well, before when I uh, rocked with, uh, with the DVBS2 encoder, it is done by register, not by Axi uh, read and write. So right now, I am, uh, well, I, I need some clarification about all this. But uh, I. Hope that we have uh, made a, a step forward for all that. I'll back to you. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, that's a, a tremendous amount of progress I've been following, and and we've been working um, on trying to get get some uh, get things working, uh, and it's it's been on on Slack. Uh, so, so those of you that have access to Slack, check it out in the Opulent Voice channel. Um, so, yeah, we've had a number of roadblocks that we've that we've managed to to work past, um, and we still have some some documentation to to write. But yeah, the register read writes like I'm the way that I do it is um, to like memory map on the in the user space like at a, in C code, and then set up a memory map and then read and write to that memory and that goes off to the registers. So that's that's how I've done it in the past, like for the encoder, for the DVBS2 encoder. So um I I share your <laughs> I share your point of view. So I, I think we'll ask for some clarification and try to get it sorted out. Because it sounded like for the receiver to work that there did need to be some register setup. So just dropping it in there and trying to stream data to it um, may not work. Uh, so it, it it's probably not anything wrong with the the code that we can tell. So I'll 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 try and help as much as I can today and try to figure that out. But yeah, overall um, we've gotten past a number of errors just over the past few days, and we're really close to it to working on on Pluto. And if it works on Pluto, that would be a really nice uh, thing. So that's the that's the status on that. Is there anything else, Everest, or any other any other comments, or anything else you can you, you can think of? Uh, yeah, the well, I need some clarification or maybe some documentation of how uh, uh, I can test uh, the component easily from the user space from uh, from the Pluto. Um, I. Uh, inspect again uh, my uh, modification of the the, the MS key uh, top uh, IP tickle, um, and I think that there is some warning, and uh, maybe we have to investigate in that. Um, maybe problem in I can't remember, but maybe a clock or something like that. Uh, just be sure that this warning are not uh, break uh, the, the communication between PS and PL. Um, and um, yeah, that's uh, that's it, I guess. Um, well, I think that we have to plan how to test the component from the Linux perspective, which means that. Uh, not by uh, well, I, I tried to uh, read some documentation on how about how to uh, actually write and read, and uh, usually we we need another component on the HDL and also uh, Linux driver um, on the PS side. 
So, well, for now, it's uh, it's not very clear for me. So, if uh, if other people uh, have some experiment on that, uh, right now I mainly uh, read and write some registers. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I know how to do. <laughs> Is just basic read write registers. So that's I I am with you, uh, and I'll do all that I can to make sure that it gets explained or, or that we that we meet you know that we connect uh our understandings um but I, yeah i agree with you i i think we're we're probably we're missing some some write write down uh some write-ups here so I'll, I'll do all i can to help make it as clear as possible um i can see that there's some good test results when you simulate the block like i i see that 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 logic is working um you know but but getting Getting that functionality hooked up into both the PS and the PL, and and your your comment about the warnings from the Tekel is is a good one. Um, so I I have my Tekel script uh, that I used the system board Tekel, uh, and I also have the uh, MSK top uh, IP Tekel, and then I'll I still need to compare mine to see what happened. I think that my underscore IP tackle is okay. I kept it very simple, uh, but I think there's still something wrong in the way that I was doing the system board tackle. And uh, I think once we get kind of get that figured out and the the uh, using the, all the clocks correctly, that the register reads and writes will, will follow. Um, there is a, we do have a pretty good script. It's a bash script that will dump the, um, you know, once it is up and running, that'll dump all of the the registers for us. Uh, that's something that we we used over on um, the DVBS2 encoder. So I think maybe taking that and using that script as a model for that might that'll be a good tool to add. Um, but first, I think we need to understand how to how to what the theory is on the access of the reads and writes. Yeah, just <clears throat> just a remark is. That on the PL, when when you when you inspect the design, uh, the, the the address of the MS key top uh, is in the axi uh, uh, axi component and not dis uh, described as a register. So right now we can't use the same uh, method as before. Oh, okay, that's good to know. I thought it was. I thought we could just use any of those. So we haven't done all of the things that we need to do yet. It sounds like it's not really complete. Yeah, that's that's right. Okay. Or, or maybe I, I misunderstood something, but um, right now, um, yeah. No, I, th I, I think you're right. I remember that in the source code for the DVB encoder, there actually is like a like a register section in the code. Um, and I don't think there is anything like that yet in in MSK top. So it sounds like we're we're not we we have a a missing link, a missing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll see what I can do. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, we'll we'll do all that we can to to make it uh, to get it back to get it in better shape. It sounds like so, but really good progress. But you know. Uh, some things that some things that are missing and and uh, yeah, thank you very much for the guidance there. All right, anything else on on opulent voice or or Paul, do you have any comments about any of the tools that we used or or register access? I know that we you helped a lot working through all of that with the DVB encoder. Um, no, I don't. I have not been paying attention to the problem, so I don't have any comments. Okay. Well, I might ask you for help with the bash script to to convert it. I, I want to use that same style because it was really useful to to for testing um, and and in in getting a better test plan. So I'll be I'll be bugging you about. Happy to help. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So uh, what I what I did this morning was I went ahead and made a. Um, this is over on high for IES, so this would be the the polyphase filter channelizer. And what I did is I took the XSA that we have, and then I made a platform project. So I went through the process that we have to create a platform 
for Vitus for the processor side. What that does is it consumes the um, system archive or you know essentially a board support package uh, and it does a lot of stuff. So I uh, put that log into HyperIE uh, channel and then I followed the the uh, procedure to make an application in, in Vitus. Uh, and the only snag that I hit is one that I kind of expected to hit with 2022 you know, the more recent versions of Vitus, it, it, we've really needed to have a sysroot exported to, so when you go to write your code, uh, you need to have the sysroot for your, for your system. And that gives you IIO and all the other libraries that are assumed to, to be in there. Um, it, I do remember that we used to be able to, in Vitus, to just say in the library section, just say IIO, or M for math, you know, so IIO is the industrial input output that we're relying upon to ship the data in, in to and from uh, the uh, the target. Uh, so I remember at one point being able to just enter those into, into Vitus and it just work, um, uh, but there does seem to be a difference with more recent versions. So you do have to, you know, in the write-up that we have, it says how to export in Petalinux, how do you export what's called an SDK. And then that sysroot file, you you then have to say, okay, Vitus, this is your sysroot. So it makes sense. Um, it's a little confusing that we have to add this extra step after it worked for a while, but it, you know, whatever. So if you look over in uh, the high for channel, you can see I did screenshots of, of the entire process to show kind of what it looks like and to see, and you now can see um, that I did get a hello world running from the processor side running on the target so it says hello world and then i changed it to to have a different message um and uh, i didn't have i didn't have access to screen or a serial connection because i think it's still up on on ken's computer but but i you know it, it's it's so i can't didn't have a screenshot of like here it is actually in the directory structure uh, but that that window on on Ken's computer should show an awful lot of activity as the uh, as I'm talking to the target and and uh, and walking through all this. So just a basic hello world. Uh, I backed out of declaring that I was using IIO and M because it's just a hello world. It doesn't use those libraries. But in order to make any progress with the Polyphase Filter Bank, we need to go ahead export sysroot, import it into Vitus, and then we'll be able to use the IIO functions in the streaming examples, and then prove that we have a channelizer. And the proof that I'm kind of proposing is that we have some sort of external source, uh, or we go ahead and transmit loop back to our own receiver, and we can show that we have picked out a channel, change channels, don't see it, change channels to our, where it's expected, we see the signal, and that that's a pretty good proof of that we're that we're actually, you know, channelizing our expected bandwidth. So, so that's what I've done so far, and um, uh, I can I can do a little. Uh, what I'll do is I'll add that deck, so so to speak. Like I'll make a little slide deck and add it to this presentation, so you can kind of it'll walk through and show you the the process. I did find two two parts of the documentation that were a little confusing, where the terminology, like preferences versus settings. Um, you know, when you're in a context menu, which one do you pick? Yes, you know, so not entirely perfect. And, and since we do want the documentation to be really good and to anybody to be able to do it, uh, I'll take the action item to fix that and to make sure that the, the documentation exactly matches what your, what your settings are. For, this doesn't really apply as much for, for Pluto. It's a lot easier to build uh, firmware and, and stuff for the for the Pluto, and so we also have that in in the uh, adding your IP <laughs> to the reference design. So we do have those instructions for for Pluto, um, but they're they're not in the big working with FPGAs section for the for the nine thousand nine and for the nine thousand two. All right, and that pretty much brings it up to speed. Uh, I know that that Matthew has a a lot of stuff. Uh, he couldn't be here today, and also Ed. Has has a lot as well, uh, but he had a conflict, and so that that those updates will come out um, on Slack, or or we'll hear more next week. Okay, anybody else?
or any last thoughts, comments, concerns, resources needed, or questions? All right. Thank you, everybody. See, see you on Slack, and uh, have, have a wonderful day. All right, here's a quick summary of, of what we did this morning in order to get a platform project and an application up and running in Vitus for Hyferia. The target is at ADRV 9009 and on a ZC706. So the first thing we did is open Vitus. Make sure you source the right version. We're using 2022.2. Um, and we already know that because we're running on Linux that we have a issue with the create platform project. So we have to use the uh, XSCT console instead of using the graphical user interface. Uh, so these are the equivalent commands, but they're run uh, on the command line from the console. All right. After that's completed, after we have the platform set up, then we click new application project. Click next. We make sure that all of this looks good. We are going to select our platform from the repository that we made in the previous step. So our platform project now shows up, PFB, we pick it. And make sure that all of this looks correct. We go ahead and we name it following the con conventions in the write-up. So underscore uh, APP for application is the end of the project name. And this will add system to the end of the system project. So just double check to make sure that everything else is right. Now we're selecting, we're making sure that the domain looks good. Now you notice that it says in the application settings in the middle of the screen, it says sysroot path. It turns out we actually really do need that. Uh, I went ahead and skipped over this part because uh, I didn't have the correct permissions to, to do it. Uh, and I, I wanted to walk through this process to see uh, that if everything would, would work. Um, and to double check our, our documentation. So we get to the point uh, where we've selected a, a hello world. So we're gonna create a new, we're gonna pick the hello world template. We click, click finish and we have a, uh, a hello world template. This is pretty cool. So what we do is we go ahead and, and build it. Uh, we, we right click and, and run it. It does take a while, builds up a runtime system. And at this point, we go ahead and right click on our application, the streaming underscore app. We're going to go to the build settings and we are going to add um, libraries. So you can see down there below, it says libraries. We're going to pick that. We're going to open it up. It has libraries and a library search path. We're going to go ahead and add IIO and M to it. And then we're going to set up our run configuration. So this allows us to just a single icon in the in the top um, uh, command pane. We're going to select single application debug. This is the screen that it gives you. And we click new over there all the way on the, the right. This is what we get. This is how we filled it out. Everything. And we leave the port as the default. 1534 is the port that we're using uh, that Vitus uses to communicate with the target. And we went ahead and we clicked test connection. I highly recommend that you always click test connection to make sure that you might need to debug something there. And it worked. So we're talking to the target uh, through our run configuration. We go ahead and click apply and run. And we ran. And we see hello world. This is uh, on the on the target. So that's that's good news. Now we went ahead and changed it. Instead of hello world, it's going to say, yes, this is a hello world. Um, we did have a problem, though. When we added in those IIO and M libraries, it cannot find uh, dash L IIO. So that's that's a problem. Um, that's we mentioned before that there is a sysroot. I think that's the issue, uh, like we talked about in the meeting. Didn't used to have to do this, but something along the along the lines has changed, and and you know including a sysroot in the in Vitus is, is highly recommended by a number of people I talked to that cleared it up before. So that's a, that's the next step that we're going to do here. So I removed the libraries to clear out the error, reran it, and it worked. So we got our updated message uh, coming back from the from the target. 